Dear viewers, wherever you are, hello and welcome to this new episode of your program, Spectra. Canada, the country that lies in the extreme northwest of the world. A country that covers about 10 million kilometers square, making it the second largest country on this planet. It spans the North American continent from coast to coast from the Atlantic Ocean in the east to the Pacific Ocean in the west, and it also spans the upper half of North America and the upper northern um, hemisphere as it covers the area between the Arctic Circle in the north to the Great Lakes in the south. This country, despite its great size, is a brand new country. It's a little bit older than 150 years. And also, Canada as we know it today, with its 10 provinces and three territories, is only a little bit more older than 20 years, believe it or not. During this very short period of time, Canada managed to be one of the most outstanding democracies, liberal countries, one of the most leading advanced countries, part of the great seven most industrial countries in the world. It is part of the NAFTA. It has the Canadian Space Agency, which boasts the Canada arms one and two and much more to come. And it is the land of many great inventions and innovations throughout the time. Today, as we celebrate the Canadian Day, the celebration as we commemorate the day when the Fathers of Confederation met in Prince Edward Island to create the beautiful Canada we know today. So who are the Canadians? Or in other words, who are the Canucks? The Canadians who are very well known around the world to use the words, sorry, please, thank you, kindly, in almost every other sentence. To shed more light on the history of Canadian citizenship and Canadians, I'm really delighted, as usual, to have a most distinguished guest that I really have the honor of having with me every year, because she is a real embodiment and a real representation that depicts how free and liberal Canada is. I'm really delighted to be accompanied by the most honorable, honorable citizenship judge, Judge Rania Spade. Judge Rania, hello and welcome, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Mr. El Hadari. It's always a pleasure to be on your show, and uh, you made us, I believe, feel very proud after your introduction. The way you introduced Canada, it's, it makes me feel very, very proud to be Canadian. Thank I you very much. You're most welcome, Your Honor. I only said the truth about Canada and about your, your honor as well. And um, um, let's start off with Canadian citizenship. Canada officially started in July the 1st, 1867, when the Fathers of Confederation met. And we had our first Prime Minister, Sir John Alexander Macdonald, and the trip started. Now, the meaning of Canadian citizenship, as we know it today, is it identical to the meaning of Canadian citizenship at the time of Canadian inception, the time of the creation of Canada? Absolutely not. I, I would say it didn't change, but it evolved. At the beginning, it was a new status to the people living on this land. But now it has a total different meaning. Canadian citizenship now means belonging, mean being under Canadian Act, mean, meaning be, uh, being uh, a, a contribute to, to the society, to the communities. It's a total uh, meaning. It is, it's a total different meaning, excuse me. It's not the same. And Canada is not the same as well, I believe. It was a country, of course, uh, 
some immigrants used to come to Canada, but we cannot consider that Canada at that time was an immigration country as it is today. So today it's different. It, yeah. It's like a, a country, as you mentioned in your introduction, it's, it's a country of freedom. It's a country of peace. It's a country uh, open to multicultural uh, uh, ethnicities. It's a culture, uh, it's a, a country uh, of opportunities. It's not the same anymore. And being citizen, a uh, Canadian citizen, is totally different now. It's not to have a status because most, mostly people who come to live in Canada have another nationality or another citizenship and decide to come to Canada to become Canadians. So it's not the same meaning. I would say it didn't change, but it evolved. So your honor moving from the beginning to today, like, you know, yes. fast forwarding time a little bit here. So um, Canada is a country that um, does not like to conceal any part of its history, whether positive or negative. Anything that happened in the past is a lesson to be learned. Mm -hmm. So they don't conceal it. They reveal it. They talk about it day and night. It's part and parcel of becoming a Canadian. You cannot become a Canadian without knowing all the positive and the negative, equally, parts of the Canadian history. Because the only way that you can guarantee that you will not repeat a mistake is to keep remembering it. Yeah. Now, how, how did Canada, um, if you can just take us through the timeline, how did Canada change from a country that maybe did not allow everyone to vote, uh, based on gender or based on ethnicity as well, a country that was not very much welcoming to some specific immigrants from some kind, some, some backgrounds, a country that might have, you know, um, laid some convictions on some Canadian citizens because of their background during World War I and World War II, to becoming Canada what we know today, the most encompassing and the most welcoming country with the extreme diverse canvas that we know today. As I mentioned, Canada evolved, evolved in all fields. And because, as you mentioned in your question, Canada learned from the past. Uh, Canada took lessons from the past. So everything people uh, who were uh, governing before did wrong, people who came after tried to, to make it right. And every time people, uh, every time like they're responsible in this country. And when I, when I say responsible, I don't mean only people um, in the government, people uh, in the politics. The people of Canada is responsible because everybody has the right to speak out whatever, because we have the freedom of speech, because we have the freedom of thought. So everybody is allowed to speak out loud all his thoughts. That's why when I say responsible, every person in this society is responsible. We have all our ideas, our principles, our um, convictions, and we want to make things right. The, the, the history, the movements, uh, the activists in this world make sometimes uh, the responsible of this country see things right. And when we see things right, we try to change what, did, what we did wrong in the past. And this is how Canada evolved. This is how Canada allowed people, prisoners, to vote. This is how Canada allowed women to vote. This is how Canada allowed other uh, parts of the community, other parts of the society to vote, who were not allowed to vote in the past. And every time we discuss about the human rights, we find that as human, we are all equal. And this is what Canada believe in. 
Canada believes in equality. And we cannot believe in equality and let some people vote and other not. So it's normal. It's normal that through the time, more and more people are allowed to vote, to vote, which is great, actually. And every year, I don't know if you, if you notice the same, Mr. Al-Hadari, but every year we find new, um, new ways of talking to respect the other because we didn't realize in the past that maybe this sentence of this or this world or this expression will hurt the feeling of someone. So every, I would not say every year, but every like while we, we find that some sentences are canceled from our language and some new other sentence expressions, words are added to our language to try as much as we can not to hurt feelings of any Canadian or any person in general, any human being on earth. So that's why Canada is considered very kind country because the people are very kind and they are always thinking about to, how to be, to be kind with others. This is how we evolve. If you have like an opinion to say about a certain behavior of a politician or a certain uh, law that you maybe find not fair, you can discuss it with your community and maybe you can come out like with a group asking to review this thing of the, or this law or this act or this bill or whatever. And there are uh, people listening in the, in the governments to, to help you, to help people reach like the social just, justice because this is what Canada is looking for. Of course, we will continue to, to evolve. And what we are applying now uh, might be changed next year or uh, in two years or in 10 years, or I don't know. Maybe it, it could change like every time it needs to be changed. And uh, Your Honor, like they say, you know, um, climbing the mountain is a hard task but staying on the peak is the hardest. So you can reach the peak once, but to stay there, you need to, you know, re-motivate yourself. So you need to find a new goal always. And um, a very usual thing that might seem strange for some people that, um, you know, when um, Canadian representatives or Canadian prime ministers, they address the United Nations, unlike many other, <laughs> world leaders when they boast and brag about the, you know, the things they have done and they would try to depict themselves and portray themselves as the saviors of the world and everybody else is attacking them. Uh, the leaders of Canada, actually, they self-criticize in front of the world. They say, we have done this, this and that, but that's not enough. Canada being one of the countries that has one of the highest standards of living and more than standards of living, quality of life. Because standard of living can mean that you can spend a lot of money, but quality of life is much more. There's freedom, there's equality, there's no oppression. But despite all of that, you know, um, there is, they're saying that there is much to be improved. Um, you know, there was the head tax that was imposed on Chinese. This was completely removed. Now the Chinese are absolutely welcome. They're part and parcel of the Canadian cabinet, Canadian government, Canadian parliament, Canadian everything. Again, um, some things were placed um, against the Ukrainians during World War I, the Japanese during World War II. All these are of the past. None of this is heard today. Again, a lot of injustice and a lot of, you know, uh, indignities were performed against the original people. Now there is a lot of reconciliation and ad most important is admittance of the crime. It happened. Nobody is trying to conceal anything. So all these things are in the past and it's the country that is trying to heal the most in the world. But still, they're saying there's much more to be improved. 
So what is to be improved in your opinion, Your Honor? First of all, isn't it beautiful to hear that? Isn't it beautiful to hear that we are never satisfied that we are on the top? And this is how we continue to conserve this, this uh, place on the top. Because we never believe that we did all what we need to do. There's always room to improve. There's always place to improve. And this is amazing. When, when I heard you saying that, I said, wow, wow. My God, yes, I did the right choice to be in Canada. You know, Mr. Al-Hadari, the new rules of the good leadership is to admit that we do mistakes. It is to share our mistakes and say, like, that was not enough to, to say sorry. We should do something to, to not let this mistake happen again. What's going on now with the reconciliation with the indigenous peoples is amazing. And it's not enough. You and I know that's not enough. You and I know that there's always room to, for improvement. We can do better. And there are, yes, excuse I'm me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, Your Honor. I just wanted to say that we know it and we can say it. The most important thing, we can say it freely. No one is coming to shut our mouth. When we say it's not enough or this needs to be further improved. Absolutely. We can say it. And, and there is no shame to say it. And this is the beauty of it. There's always place to improve. We know that no one is perfect and nothing is perfect. Mm -hmm. And country, Canada is not a perfect country. We cannot be perfect. We try. We try to make uh, Canadian Canada a, a, a better place, not only Canada, but the world a better place. We try as much as we can. But there's always, like, maybe what's good today and what's perfect today could not be perfect tomorrow. And as we said, like... Uh, uh, now, uh, to answer your previous question, it was like, it's what's good today could, may not be good tomorrow. Maybe we will change our mind. Because I believe that in the past, Canadian, Canadians made mistakes, but they, they were not aware that, that these things were really mistakes. But now they realize that, oh, this is a mistake and it should not be that way. And we try to correct it. We try to make things better. And this is how we can improve. In everything, you, as I said, everyone is invited to suggest improvement, to show improvement, to do improvement in his little society, in his little community, everyone should do something, should contribute on his way. Absolutely. And this is how we can contribute and we can uh, arrange things. And uh, uh, speaking yeah. of indigenous peoples, just like uh, between brackets, speaking of indigenous peoples, actually, um, as I said, there's a lot to be done. And it's uh, now, it's only one year on the bill 6-8 that uh, changed the citizenship um, oath and to, that recognized the, the rights of indigenous peoples. Now, since uh, June 21st, 2021, the oath has been changed. And since that date, the new citizens uh, take the oath. And uh, of course, uh, where it's mentioned that they respect and affirms the constitution which recognizes and affirms the Aboriginal and treaty rights of uh, First Nations, Inuit and Indigenous peoples. So this is one thing from, uh, from the, um, uh, excuse me, oh, I lost you, just one second, I lost you.
sorry, Mr. Al Hadari. I... No worries. Okay, now I see you. I'm so sorry. No worries at all. So I, I was saying that this is one thing of uh, the um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It, it was the call, uh, it was the action number 94 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. But there is other action to take. There, there's still a lot of things to, to be taken and to be, to be done. We can improve a lot. And in many ways and in different areas of society. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, whenever you feel that you've done it all, you're invincible, then this is the beginning of the downfall. So uh, in order to keep our, like, you know, um, leg sperm, we have to be down to earth and uh, always consider improvement all the time. Now, um, in a very turbulent world today, we, have, we are seeing atrocities of war, you know, civil strife, civil war clashes between different cultures, different civilizations. Uh, there is unfortunately a lot of chaos going around the world. And Canada is part and parcel of this planet. Uh, Canada is one of the most famous countries for peacekeeping forces and for trying to spread peace all around the world. But, uh, you know, um, there has been sort of a, a new paradigm mm -hmm that has been created after um, March 2020 with, with COVID hitting the world. There's war in Europe. There's, um, you know, possibilities of maybe another war in Asia, et cetera, et cetera. So what is the role of Canada and Canadians in this turbulent sea? Okay. I don't want to talk about the political side of it, but about the human side of it. Canada is doing actually great uh, with the human uh, side of, the, of, this, of these conflicts around the world. We tried our best in Canada to make the pandemic uh, be smooth on people. Like the government helped a lot. Every government on, in every province, people helped each other as much as, I can, as, as they can. I mean, Canada made its part concer concerning the pandemic. Once again, nobody is perfect. Certainly, there were some mistakes, and I'm not going to talk about political uh, issues and political uh, uh, matters in, in this, in this uh, thing, but just to say that there is always place to improvement and maybe, and I would not like to say, uh, like, maybe we'll have another pandemic one day. I don't want to think even about that, but at least we learn the lesson and for another crisis, we could act better. Concerning the war. Canada is always offering place for people who have lost their houses, their homes, their belonging, then their everything. So you have seen Ukrainian arriving to Canada and who, are, who have been welcomed with open arms. And this is how Canada welcomed Syrian refugees. This is how Canada welcomed other refugees throughout the history. It's not first, it's not a first, it's not new to Canada to welcome people from all around the world. I cannot say that they were not mistakes. Like you, you might tell me like, oh, what happened in Afghanistan? I will not talk about that. But I always admit that they, there's always mistake. Not because someone did wrong, because some circumstances like uh, led to this. We could not blame a person or a politic or, or anything concerning a matter. There are circumstances. And I'm not going to go deep into politics. I'm just saying that Canada is always ready to do its part uh, when we are talking about human 
Canada is continuing to do its part concerning the Ukrainian war or the war in Ukraine. And it will continue to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Of course, we don't want to delve deeper into the political matter, like you, Honor, said. Like it's a, it's a terrible situation. Of course, we hope the best for all, and um, we hope that yeah, like we as Canadians, we can always set you know um, the way and be a role model for others to follow. Now, um, you are a very distinguished citizenship judge. And you are a a first-generation immigrant and who managed, as a first-generation immigrant, to have one of the most honored and distinguished positions in Canada. Now, uh, what is your advice to people who just took the oath? They took the oath. So, which means they are officially Canadians. They are Canadians on paper. They have the Canadian passport. They have the Canadian, you know, documents. Maybe not yet the passport. Okay. Maybe not the passport. Yeah, there is a <laughs> gridlock in the in the passport um, issuing now. But um, nevertheless, this does not really give them the Canadian identity. Like, what is the way for those people to become real Canadians? People who come from all four corners of the globe. People who come from, you know, uh, wars, atrocities, oppression. They come, they carry, they come with a lot of trauma, physical trauma sometimes, some, uh, a lot of psychological trauma, a lot of problems, a lot of oppressions and so on. But here they can be the neighbors or the subordinates or the bosses of people who come from the other countries that were enemies to them or Mm -hmm. countries that had a negative history with them. What can you say to those people? Thank you very much uh, for this question. I just want to mention that I'm one of nine uh, citizenship judges in Canada and they are all amazing people. So uh, I, I just want to mention that. Concerning my advice to new citizens, when you decide to become Canadian, it doesn't mean only a title. Don't take it as a title uh, on your passport or on your ID or to show off with it when you go back to your country of origin. To be Canadian is to live the Canadian values. The Canadian values, as I said, they believe in equality, freedom, respect, uh, and to be under the law. If we consider these things and many others as well, we think that we are effectively all equals. We are equals because I don't have any privilege that you don't have. I don't have, if I can speak out, speak like uh, out my my thoughts, you can do as well. Um, If you decide to become Canadian citizen, you have to respect the diversity of Canada. Canada is a diverse country. It's not made of one people. It's like maybe the most multicultural country in the world. I can say it. Because, you know, Mr. Al-Hadari, in your neighborhood, how many different nationalities and ethnicities are on your street? Countless. Countless. I live in a very small street and I cannot know how many different ethnicities are on my street. They are all my neighbors. They are all taking care of the grass in front of their house, as I do. So nothing makes me different than them. Nothing makes them different than me. We are equal. 
if let's say I come from a country who was in war with another another country and when and my neighbor just next to me is from this other country I leave all my thoughts all my uh, uh, feelings of my other country in my other country so no it should not be because neighbors in Canada and I believe that you have good neighbors as well they take care of each other they take care of each other someone will come knock on my door I, I remember now in the pandemic someone came knocked at my door I don't know this person I opened the door and he said I'm just I'm your neighbor and I just want to make sure that you don't need anything and everything is fine because if you need like because at that time I believe Lysol was not found in the supermarkets he told me I have Lysol I have things if you ever need anything so this neighbor doesn't know who we are I don't know him I don't know he from what country he is he is originally all what I know that it is a Canadian citizen living next to my house and who is doing his duty as a Canadian, taking care of each other's. Mm -hmm. To be a real Canadian, you have to forget all what you have been in the past, like only the bad things. I, I don't want to erase all the history and all the, um, the good thing, the culture our cultures that we bring with us from our country of origin, but all, all your hate, leave it, leave it where it should be and be only Canadian. Kind, polite, say sorry, as you mentioned in your introduction. It made me, it made me smile because that's true. Yeah. Sorry is not bad. Sorry is good. If we say it to someone, we feel, we feel better. And if someone would tell us sorry because it's, there is a place for a sorry, we feel good. Just be Canadian. Just be Canadian. Forget who you were before. Um, really, Your Honor, you know, like this is a, um, something I always point to. I always see that moving to a new country is like, you know, moving from your old house to a new house even if they're in the same country or the same village or the same whatever, um, when you're moving from an old house to a new house, I don't think any of our dear viewers ever took every single piece of furniture from the old one to the new one. They take valuable things, things that have special memories, things that they really cherish, you know, souvenirs, maybe. But because of the difference of models, time, colors, they must leave some things behind and purchase new things. So um, if we do this on the materialistic side with furniture and, you know, blocks, then how are we not doing this with the psychological part and the mental part, which I think should have more priority? I absolutely agree, but I would like to clarify something. Maybe I didn't mention it clearly in my answer, but I just want to say that I'm very proud of my origins and every person should be very proud of his origin. But you know what? Take the beautiful things of your origins and take the beautiful things of the Canadian cultures because we can find a lot of beautiful values and things in the Canadian cultures. Take it, adopt it, because you decided to adopt this country. You want to be Canadian? Be a real Canadian without ignoring anything of your origins, of your roots. You should be very proud of who you are, where do you come from, but just integrate in the, in the, in the right way in this beautiful community. Uh, last but not least, Your Honor, and I think this is a very um, important uh, question that our viewers would like to really hear from, you know, someone as distinguished as you here in Canada, is people who are watching us who are considering to come to Canada. 
where people have just landed in Canada. And um, unfortunately, many of those people, um, you know, hear a lot of hateful, divisive rhetoric, you know, uh, many illusions and many misconceptions are spread, uh, saying that no, like Canada is the place for, for this group, not that group. Again, uh, party A supports this group and party B, B supports the opposite group. This very divisive, you know, um, rhetoric that is being spread all around. Again, another people say that, um, okay, when we come here to Canada, we will just, you know, okay, um, we'll take the passport because we want to, you know, show off everywhere with the passport. Uh, but uh, staying in Canada will ruin our identity and will ruin mm. our kids and will ruin our children. Other people, on the other hand, think that, okay, we'll come to Canada, we'll stay in Canada, but our children will grow exactly the way we, we grew up. And of course, you know, more than anyone, the amount of dilemmas that happen between the first and second generation. So what is your prescription? If you'd like to give, you know, an advice to those people, like do's and don'ts before they consider coming or people who just landed, before they delve and go deeper into the crypts of Canada, before going deeper anymore, if you cannot do it, then maybe you made the wrong step. I don't want to be pretentious and, they, and say that I have the magical prescription for that, but I have like an advice for people who decide to come to Canada. If you are not willing to love this country and adopt it like your own child, don't come. Don't come. You know, your child, you love it. You love him, you love her with no conditions, unconditionally, right? You try, you try to raise them the way you like to raise them. That's amazing, which is great and which is good. But we all know that our kids are not ours. Mm -hmm. Like Gibran Khalil Gibran said, okay, our kids are not ours. They are the kids of this life. It's not like uh, exactly the, I'm paraphrasing. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So and, uh, they uh, are not mine. For our non-Arabic viewers, Jabran Khalil Jabran is one of the most outstanding Lebanese and Arabic poets. And, um, and he's no internationally, actually he wrote all what he wrote in English and they were translated to Arabic. Yes, so it's, it's um, you know, uh, this is a live example of someone who is a Canadian judge of citizenship. <laughs> so what's more Canadian than that? It's going to be more Canadian than that. But still, you always cherish your background as a person with Lebanese origins. So you never As I said, you never as I said I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. And every person should be very proud of his own origins. What I, would, what I want to say, and concerning raising the kids, because you mentioned it in, the, in your question, you can raise your kid the way you want. But anyways, your kids are not yours. And they will grow up the way they want. And their life is there. It's not, it's never our lives. We cannot control their lives. They are free. We, we bring them to this life, but they are free to live this life. They're not a property. Uh, not at all. Not at all. They are human being totally free. And you give them the recipe of the good values to be good people, to respect the others, to respect themselves, to respect the law, to respect all what you want them to respect. And they will decide what to do with their life. Because raising your kids in your country of origin, if that kid would not be good and is not willing to be good, this kid will never be good. If you raise him in your country of origin or in Canada or in any other country, 
this kid will do whatever he wants or whatever she wants. They will do whatever they want. So raising kids and being afraid that the Canadian society might, uh, I don't know, change the mind of my kids, that's not true. This is a myth. It's not a reality. This is a myth. Why do you say that the Canadian community or the Canadian society will change your kids' minds? Why? Is the Canadian society bad? If it is bad, why did you decide to immigrate to Canada? Why did you decide to come and live in Canada? If it's bad, stay wherever you are. Maybe it's better. It's better for you. You ca- For the people or for the person who would come to Canada with this idea in mind, do not come. Don't come. You will be miserable. If you come to Canada with an open mind to accept the others, no matter who these others are, just accept them as they, you want them to accept you. Accept the others. Do whatever you want in your house, in your family, in your society. You are free to do whatever you want and you would res- be respected for that. But if you want to come to Canada and decide, oh, Canada hates these people or this group of people and this Canada cherish more this group of people. Don't come. That's not true. And my advice, never, never listen to what's going around you listening. Discover yourself. Experience yourself. Everything you want to know about, go experience it yourself. By yourself. Absolutely. Because all what I heard at, when I first arrived to Canada, all what I heard from people around me was wrong. Everything I heard was wrong. Everything I discovered by myself, I learned about it, and I was convinced what's wrong, what's right. We should also remember that we are never, we don't think the same way of others. So maybe the judgment of the others is not our judgment. Yeah, very true. Um, you know, your honor, as usual, it's a great pleasure and honor, and privilege, really, to have you with us here in the program. Um, before I, you know, uh, wish you a very, uh, you know, beautiful Canada Day, I would like to borrow something from um, our previous interview last year, and I think it's it's a very important note to end the this episode with. Last year, I asked you about, um, you know, a lot of people say that Canada doesn't have an identity and like there is no clear Canadian identity. And then you told me something that was really outstanding. And to come to think of it, this is what we're seeing every day. Um, Why are you considering um, old definitions of identity? Canada actually coined and created and innovated itself a new meaning of national identity, which is multiculturalism. You know, and um, I was, uh, you know, like this really went deep into my head and I started thinking about it. And this is something that we see every day. And I think it's a very, very valuable advice to everyone. Um, Your Honor, I really thank you very much for your precious time. Um, really looking forward to having you time and again with us. And I wish you a very pleasant and a very beautiful Canada Day. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Al Hadari. Thank you. The pleasure and the honor are mine. Thank you. Thank you for your audience and uh, happy Canada Day to you too. Thank you very much. And uh, dear viewers, if we were just to um, wrap up here, Canada, like we said, is a very young country only more than 20 years old, Canada, that we know today. Even if we go further in history, it's only 150 years old. And during this time, it managed to, you know, um, create an incredible amount of success. And it is still growing. 
and it is um, still open to change and open to improvement. The only way that this happened is by keeping Canada a most liberal, a most encompassing, a most welcoming country. A country that finds in this, the strength in the diversity. You know, it learns from everything. You know, we, we, everyone loves to look at the rainbow colors, loves to look at, you know, the fields in the spring. You know, because unfortunately, again, some people who, who did not indulge themselves well into the Canadian identity uh, might have some negative connotations about the rainbow. And I cannot say enough about how close-minded that is. Turning the beauty into something ugly, and I really wish those people to reconsider what they're thinking. But I have to repeat it again, yes, the rainbow was and still is and will always be a very beautiful symbol. And we all love the variety of these colors. And the beauty of the rainbow comes from the mixing of these colors together. If you just had an, uh, like a red arc or a um, yellow arc, it wouldn't be as beautiful as having all the seven colors of the spectrum. I don't think we'll settle to eat one meal, you know, just one. So no matter how much you love turkey, for example, I don't think you'd like to have it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, 365 days in a year. I don't think so. You wouldn't like the same drink. You wouldn't like to wear the same shirt, would you? So how come that we appreciate variety in everything, but not in ourselves? Isn't that very ironic? I wish we all reconsider that and bring your hands together because I really believe that hand in hand we can. Dear viewers, thank you very much for watching us. I wish all who observe Canada Day a very pleasant Canada Day and may the true North live forever strong and free. Thank you very much. Take care and we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching.